ABA. <coughs> ABA is a growth inhibitor. Abscisic acid, it is a growth inhibitor. Adicot, isolated abscisin promoting substance from cotton fruits. For that, he gave the term abscisin 1 and abscisin 2. Next, varying isolated dormancy promoting substance from leaves of sycamore from leaves of sycamore and for the dormancy promoting substance he gave the term dormin so actually abscisin 2 and dormin both are structurally same finally for the two substance gave that gave the term abscisic acid, give the term abscisic acid, then abscisic acid rightly 15 carbon sesquiterpenoid produce both anabolically and also catabolically anabolically produced from acetyl coenzyme A and catabolically produced from carotenoids. The abscisic acid present in almost all plants of the plant kingdom and also present in major parts of the plant. Then physiological effects of auxins, uh, physiological effects of abscisic acid, dormancy, then senescence, dormancy, senescence, then stomatal closure, then perinating buds. So, now description, it promotes C dormancy and bud dormancy, abscisic acid promotes both C dormancy and bud dormancy. So, C dormancy is antagonistic property to gibberellins, actually gibberellins promote C, dar C, dar C germination. Gibberellins promotes seed germination, but abscisic acid promotes that uh, dormancy. Then it promotes senescence. Then important point is when plant facing water stress condition that the leaves produce abscisic acid. This abscisic acid it leads to closure of stomata and thus it help in reducing transpiration. So, it is called antitranspirant and it is natural antitranspirant. Then during water stress condition this hormone is formed and reduce transpiration. So, it is also called water stress hormone and in some aquatic plants particularly lemna, lemna during summer when water dry up, this ABA produce perinating buds. This perinating buds sink down and reaches to bottom and again next season means in rainy season that the bud germinates. In that way, this lemna plant survive by perinating buds. So, these perinating buds are formed by abscisic acid, simplest phytohormone is ethylene, 
because it is the only gaseous hormone and it is structurally similar to carotenoids because like carotenoids the acetylene is made up of hydrocarbons carbon and hydrogen then precursor for ethylene is a methionine amino acid so ethylene is produced from methionine importance of methionine it is initiating amino acid in any protein synthesis that the first amino acid is methionine that methionine is initiating amino acid then the acetylene present in almost all parts of the plant then gain suggested that ethylene is considered to be a phyto hormone and a physiological effects of ethylene studied by timman and berg so timman and berg they studied that the physiological effects of this uh, ethylene physiological effects of ethylene then ethylene functions rightly ethylene is ethylene is called fruit ripening hormone so its main function it promotes ripening of fruits in banana grapes and even tomato then next one triple response growth generally ethylene inhibits longitudinal growth and promotes transverse growth that is called a triple response growth reported in p seedlings then ethylene promotes formation of female flowers in a pineapple along with the auxins then ethylene also produces adventitious roots it also produce adventitious roots then lateral root formation and also root hair formation for uh, increasing that absorption of water then in uh, some plants inrolling of petals takes place this inrolling of petals is called a sleep disease inrolling of petals and in some plants more growth takes place on upper side of petiole lower then lower so leaf will droop that condition is called epinasty then it promotes senescence but it break dormancy then it break bud and seed dormancy in some plants like rice in rice that leaf always present above the water it is due to elongation of petiole this length of petiole can be increased by that uh, ethylene then ethylene is gaseous hormone there is practical application of ethylene to that plants generally ethylene is applied to plant in the form of ethepon then this ethepon release that uh, ethylene 
Photoperiodism means relative duration of light in day and night on flowering is called photoperiodism. Photoperiodism was discovered by Garner and Allard in two varieties. One is variety of tobacco called Maryland Mammoth and Biloxi variety of soya bean, Biloxi variety of soya bean. So, in 24 hours that uh, day duration is called a photo period and a night duration night time is called a scoto period. Generally in plants vegetative mycelium, vegetative meristem converted into reproductive meristem, then into flower. So, vegetative meristem converted into reproductive meristem, then into flower. It takes place in presence of light. In presence of light, vegetative meristem converted into reproductive meristem then flower. This is sequence, this if, if this sequence occur in presence of light, it is called photoperiodism or if it occur with the help of temperature, it is called vernalization and also takes place by the help of phyto hormones. Then definite light period is required for conversion of vegetative mycelium, vegetative meristem to reproductive meristem into flower. That definite time period is called critical day length. Generally, this critical day length is 10 to 14 hours. Then based on critical day length, based on critical day length, this plants divided into three types, short day plants, long day plants and day neutral plants. Short day plants, flowering takes place when they are exposed to only 8 to 10 hours. It means light period is less than critical day length. So, more dark period is required. So, dark period is crucial. So, dark period is continuous. If dark period is interrupted by light, flowering fails. Example for short day plants, tobacco, xanthium and glycine max. The next one long day plants. Long day plants, flowering takes place when they are exposed to 14 to 16 hours of light. It means light period is more than critical day length. So, light period is crucial, light period is continuous. If light period is interrupted by dark, that flowering fails. Example for long day plants, 
long day plants example henbane then beetroot and spinach these are example for long day plants day neutral plants flowering is unaffected by that day or night called a day neutral plants example for day neutral plants cucumber and maize vernalization vernalization means low temperature treatment given to plant at a seedling stage so low temperature treatment given to plant at a seedling stage is called vernalization and a vernalization was first reported by lysenko so vernalization reported by lysenko then there are some poesi members there are some poesi members or a gramine members like a wheat scientific name is triticum st1 wheat rye sekel cereal barley hardium barley scientific name hardium vulgare these are graminear poesi members and actually these are two types of varieties spring variety and also winter varieties spring and winter varieties then if spring variety sown in spring season spring variety when sown in spring season they germinate and uh, harvested at uh, early summer because spring variety does not need low temperature winter variety winter variety when sown in spring season winter variety when sown in winter season winter season fails to germinate because in in winter season seeds do not germinate and uh, if sown in spring season fails to germinate because in spring season they do not get uh, low temperature that is why if winter variety if winter variety sown in autumn season then flowers are formed and the fruits are formed and rightly harvested in summer harvested in summer then annuals in annuals flowering occurs at the end of first year only because in annuals that a seed get proper low temperature at a starting stage but biennials biennials flowering takes place after passing through winter of second year why means in biennials that seeds do not get 
low temperature at starting stage. So, if biennials in biennials, if seeds are subjected to low temperature, required low temperature at a starting stage, flowering occurs at the end of first year only. It means actually in biennials, in second year flowering takes place. If proper or required temperature is given to this is biennial seeds at starting stage that flowering occurs at the end of first year only and uh, biennials or root crops example radish and uh, carrot. Next one seed dormancy. In favorable conditions, in favorable conditions, if viable seed fails to germinate, it is called a dormancy. In unfavorable conditions, in unfavorable conditions, if viable seed fails to germinate, it is called a quiescence. So, first causes of dormancy. It is generally because of hard seed coat. This hard seed coat impermeable, hard seed coat impermeable to oxygen. Example, xanthium hot seed coat impermeable to water, fabes members, example trigonella, then mechanically resist embryo, mechanically resist embryo capsule. It is first one due to hard seed coat. Then in some plants immatured embryo that uh, even at the time of seed germination the seed contains immatured embryo. In some plants, seed contains fully developed embryo, but uh, seeds fails to germinate because embryo required low temperature. And in some plants, dormancy is due to light some plants required light for seed germination, rightly called positively photoblastic seed. Example for positively photoblastic seed, lactuca. Some plants seed germination is inhibited in presence of light called negatively photoblastic seed. Example, onion. So, these are causes of dormancy. Then methods for breaking dormancy. One is scarification. Scarification means removal of hot seed coat. Removal of hot seed coat is called a scarification. The scarification is of two types, mechanical scarification and uh, chemical scarification. Mechanical scarification means rubbing seed against sand, it is called mechanical scarification. Chemical scarification, removal of that seed using that uh, chemicals like uh, sulfuric acid is called a uh, chemical scarification. The next one stratification, 
stratification means subjecting seeds to low temperature is called a stratification it is also called that a freezing treatment then in some fabes members there is outgrowth which is developed from seed called a strophiole the strophiole blocks micropyle that is why entry of water is prevented hence dormancy takes place the strophiolar plugger can be removed by shaking that seeds right it is called impaction actually smallest seed smallest seed present in orchids largest seed present in double coconut largest seed present in double coconut lodicea double coconut and actually study of seeds study of seeds is called a spermatology and a first seeded plants first seeded plants gymnosperms then structure of seed simple seed means it is surrounded by seed coats bitegmic ovule into integments converted into seed coats so bitegmic ovule seed contains two seed coats outer seed coat is called testa inner seed coat is called tegmen testa is edible in pomegranate cotyledons edible in some fabes members edible cotyledons and also anacardium cashew nut then in gamopedalus members only one integument is present if one integument present means that seed contains single seed coat in parasitic members loranthus belenophora ategmic ovules so no seed coats seed without seed coat parasitic members single seed coat gamopedalus members two seed coats present in dicots and a monocots if two seed coats outer seed coat is called testa inner seed coat is called tegmen in a most of the dicots in most of the dicots seed is without endosperm if endosperm is absent such seeds are called exalbuminous seeds or also called non endospermic seeds exalbuminous or non endospermic seeds common in dicots but some exceptional dicot with endospermic seed solanaceae and dicot with endospermic seed castor and in castor reserve food oils that is why this castor contains elaioplast elaioplast means oil containing leucoplast are called elaioplast elaioplast also called oleosomes generally oil seeds contains glyoxisomes so castor contains elaioplast or oleosomes and glyoxisomes and in castor reserve food is oil so germinating castor seed rq values less than 1 then in most of the monocots in most of the monocots seeds contains endosperm so rightly called albuminous seeds or endospermic seeds albuminous or endospermic seeds common in monocots then some exceptional in monocots orchids orchids monocots but seed is non endospermic then point it is structure of seed then seed germination actually seed contains little or less amount of water so first step during seed germination is imbibition of water so first step is 
imbibition of water, seed imbibe water, then a seed swells, then it develop pressure on seed coats, then seed coats get ruptured, then embryonic axis exposed and a first which structure emit from that seed means radical because radical gives rise to that root system. Afterwards, it then once this embryo is exposed, then oxygen is available, then aerobic respiration takes place and that stored food starch converted into simple food materials. It means first seed swells, then embryonic axis exposed, then radical emerges. Once that embryo exposed, oxygen available, so aerobic respiration takes place. This aerobic respiration break down that a reserve food into simple form, then mobilization of that food takes place. All these together called seed germination. Then types of seed germination, there are three types of seed germination. One is called epigel. Epigel seed germination means cotyledons are above the ground. If cot cotyledons above the ground called epigel. So, for example, it is embryonic axis. It is embryonic axis. This embryonic axis contains embryonic node. This embryonic node, it gives cotyledons. Then lower side, radical. Radical gives root system. Upper side, plumule. Plumule gives shoot system. So, embryonic axis between plumule and embryonic node is called epicotyle. Embryonic axis between cotyle and radical is called hypocotyle. So, point is types of seed germination, three types. So, first one epigel. Epigel means cotyledons above the ground. Why cotyledons above the ground means this uh, hypocotyle elongates. That is why cotyledons above the ground called epigel seed germination. Example for epigel seed germination, cucurbita. Then second type of seed germination is hypogel. Hypogel seed germination means cotyledons below the ground. Why cotyledons below the ground means? It is due to elongation of epicotyle called hypogel. Hypogel example, maize and mango, maize and mango. Then point is third type, viviparous seed germination. Vivipari, it is also called in situ seed germination or also called aerial seed germination. Aerial seed germination. In situ or VV pyramids, seed germination takes place inside the fruit. Seed germination occurs inside the fruit, that fruit still attached to parent plant. Called a VV pari or in situ or aerial germination. It is character of mangroves. Actually mangroves means it shows two characters. One is viviparous germination and second one is that uh, respiratory roots. And example for this uh, rhizophora and uh, avicennia. Rhizophora and avicennia. So, it is dormancy and a germination. So, growth is irreversible, permanent increase in size. Actually, almost uh, all parts of plant shows unlimited growth, but limited growth. Which part shows limited growth means leaves, leaf shows limited growth. Then in plants growth is unique because throughout life growth takes place. Why throughout life growth takes place means because of meristems. Then Meristem term was given by Nageli. Then plant growth is called uniform because whenever growth is needed, new cells are added by meristems. So, it is called open form of growth. 
So, plant growth is unique and open form of growth. Unique is unlike other organisms, open form means whenever growth is needed, new cells added by meristems. Then phases of growth, phase of growth three types meristematic, elongation, maturation zone. Meristematic it shows slow growth that is called lag phase, elongation it shows rapid growth called a log phase or exponential. Then that a senescent stage growth is constant because of that S shape or sigmoid curve is obtained. It is exemplified for what means increase in fresh weight or dry weight or number of cells. This is by geometrical application. Then arithmetic growth, in arithmetic growth exemplified by root elongation and a root elongation means it gives what type of graph means that a linear, linear graph. Then next one conditions, conditions necessary for growth, water, oxygen, even a temperature. Water is essential because water maintains turgidity. Then only in turgid cells, only in turgid cells that uh, stretched, cell wall get uh, stretched. Then oxygen is essential for growth because oxygen help in respiration. Respiration gives energy and uh, in presence of energy cell division takes place. Then nutrients both the macro and micro elements essential for growth because they produce that uh, protoplasm. Then these are uh, conditions for growth. Then next one plant shows different phases of life cycle, different phases of modifications based on environment that is called uh, plasticity. Best example for plasticity, plasticity is heterophily. Best example is heterophily. Heterophily, presence of two kinds of leaves on same plant is called heterophily. Actually, heterophily is of three types. One is habitual heterophily, then environmental heterophily environmental heterophily. Third one, developmental heterophily. Habitual heterophily means presence of two kinds of leaves from starting stage onwards. It is called habitual heterophily. Example for habitual heterophily, gymnosperm, cycus. In cycus, two types of leaves present from starting stage, rightly called, rightly scale leaves scale leaves are called ketophils. Another one normal photosynthetic leaves called foliage leaves. It is for habitual heterophily. Environmental heterophily, environmental heterophily common in hydrophytes. Best example ranunculus, ranunculus is buttercup, common name is buttercup. In ranunculus upper leaves are normal and they perform photosynthesis and the lower leaves are dissected for absorption of water. So, it is called environmental heterophily. Then third one developmental heterophily. Developmental heterophily means changing in structure of leaf from juvenile means young stage to matured stage is called developmental heterophily. Example for developmental heterophily, dolichus. In dolichus, actually, young leaf is simple and a matured leaf is compound. Matured leaf compound. Even one more example, Parkinsonia is zero fight. In Parkinsonia, young stage, leaves are bipinnately compound. Bipinnately compound means Secondary arches contains leaflets, 
called bipinnate compound. But after maturity, these leaflets fall off. After maturity, leaflets fall off. The secondary rash is modified into leaf-like and perform the function of photosynthesis. That is called fill load. So these are types of heterophily. Three types: habitual, envir environmental, and uh, developmental heterophily. Then some important and extra points for phytohormones: auxins, eubulins. cytokinins then abscisic acid and uh, ethylene say among this first three growth promoters because they promote plant growth and abscisic acid growth inhibitor then ethylene both growth promoter and also inhibitor among these five types only ethylene is a gaseous hormone and a most simplest hormone then nitrogen containing phytohormones nitrogen containing phytohormones auxins then cytokinins and ethylene these are non nitrogenous containing phytohormones non nitrogenous non nitrogenous gibberellins and uh, aba then mainly auxins and cytokinins they show polar movement auxins and cytokinins shows polar movement polar movement means apex to down or down to apex then most common auxin is indolestic acid precursor for indolestic acid tryptophan and a zinc element essential for tryptophan then the main importance of auxins auxins act as weed sites here both the dicot and monocot weed sites Dicot weed side is 2,4-D. Monocot weed side, that is dalapan. Dalapan means 2,2 dichloro propionic acid. Propionic acid. Then gibberellins. Here one more important rooting hormone. Generally, rooting hormones. auxins produces roots but majorly rooting hormone is iba it is effective hormone then gibberellins main function of gibberellins stem elongation they act on subapical meristems they act on subapical meristems where internodal differentiation takes place that is why they help in elongation of internodes then these gibberellins are chemically terpenes and precursor for gibberellins acetyl coenzyme a and uh, main function of gibberellins they promotes seed germination first reported in barley seed first reported in barley seed and uh, first discovered gibberellinus or gibberellic acid is ga3 then cytokinins precursors for cytokinins purines but first discovered cytokinin is kinetin kinetin is chemically 6 furfuryl amino purine but it is not a natural it is degradable substance first discovered natural cytokinin zeatin 
was discovered natural cytokinase zeatin. The zeatin was isolated by lethem from immatured maize grains along with auxins. Along with auxins, the cytokinins help in morphogenesis or organogenesis, formation of plant pods from callus. It's called a morphogenesis or a organogenesis. Then, employment of living material, employment of living materials to test biological activities is called a bioassay test. Bioassay test for auxins, avena growth test for auxins. Bioassay test for gibberellins, barley endosperm test. Bioassay test for gibberellins. And a bioassay test for cytokinins, chlorophyll preservation test. Why means this uh, Richmond and Lang, Richmond Lang found that when detached xanthium leaves, when detached xanthium leaves treated with cytokinins, that senescence postponed to several days. So, such delay of senescence is called uh, Richmond Lang effect. Lang effect. So, that is why for cytokinins bioassay test, chlorophyll preservation test, for gibberellins barley endosperm test and a dwarf maize test. Then ABA, ABA is growth inhibitor, ABA abscisic acid growth inhibitor, chemically these are sesquiterpenoids chemical is sesquiterpenoids produced from both acetyl coenzyme A and also carotenoids. From acetyl coenzyme A anabolically it is formed carotenoids catabolically. The ethylene is gaseous hormone, it is nitrogen containing phytohormone produced from nitrogen containing amino acid that is what means methionine and uh, ABA it is called water stress hormone. ABA is water stress hormone because when plant facing that water stress condition this ABA is formed and leads to closure of stomata. So, it is called water stress hormone and it is natural anti transparent. Then main function of ethylene, this ethylene help in fruit ripening, ethylene help in fruit ripening. So, it is called fruit ripening hormone and uh, ethylene treated tobacco leaves, the contains less amount of nicotine and uh, ethylene promotes flowering even in mango and uh, pineapple. When ethylene is sprayed to that a nicotine plant, senescence, synchronous senescence takes place. Synchronous senescence means at a time all leaves become senescent. So, it reduces that uh, picking of leaves. So, these are some important features of that. Uh, growth hormones. So, photoperiodism means duration of day and light on flowering is called photoperiodism. Then photoperiodism discovered by Garner and Allard and a critical day length means a photoperiod required for most of the plants is 10 to 14 hours. It is called a photoperiod or critical day length. Based on critical day length, plants divided into long day, short day, 
day neutral plants. For long day plants, 14 to 16 hours needed. So, it is more than critical day length. Short day plants, 8 to 10 hours. It is less than critical day length. And uh, day neutral plants, flowering is unaffected. Right? Then, next, uh, vernalization reported by Lysenko. Vernalization reported by Lysenko. Then, vernalization means low temperature treatment given at a seedling stage is called vernalization. Annuals, in annuals, example for annual cereals. So, cereal's lifespan is one year. At the end of first year only flowering takes place. Why means? In cereals, that uh, seeds get uh, proper low temperature or required low temperature at starting stage only. That is why at the end of first year only flowering takes place. Biennials, biennials starting stage that seed did not get a proper low temperature. That is why in biennials flowering takes place only after passing through winter of second year. For a biennial, if proper low temperature is given at a seedling stage, at the end of first year only flowering takes place. It means we can convert biennials into annuals. This statement is wrong. We cannot convert biennials into annuals, just we can reduce that flowering period from second year to first year. And a perennial plants like mango, in perennials every year, perennials vernalized every year. So, in perennials flowering takes place every year. Then dormancy, dormancy means seed have viable capacity, but they fail to germinate called a dormancy. Then your extra point is some plants they required light for germination called a positively photoblastic seeds. Some plants they do not need light for germination called a negatively photoblastic seeds, positively and negatively photoblastic seeds and most common dormancy is due to hard seed coat and actually removal of hard seed coat is called scarification, scarification and stratification, stratification means low temperature treatment, that low temperature treatment is called stratification. Then particularly in some Fabaceae members that a dormancy is due to strophiol. Strophiol is outgrowth developed from seed, it blocks micropyle. So, it blocks micropyle, so entry of water is prevented and this strophiol can be removed by simple shaking that seeds, rightly called the impaction. So, vigorous shaking of seeds is called uh, that uh, impaction. So, plant growth is unique because it contains meristems. So, that uh, meristems are uh, always divide and they add a uh, continuously cells to that a uh, plant. Actually, how many types of meristems present? How many types means based on position three types, apical, intercalary and uh, lateral meristems. Your apical and intercalary meristems, they are primary meristems and they help in linear growth. Then lateral meristems, lateral meristems present 
only in gymnosperms and dicots and uh, later meristems the increases width or uh, that uh, diameter then next one differentiation de differentiation and uh, re differentiation re differentiation differentiation this primary meristems like apical meristems they gives new cells that are new cells differentiate to perform that are new functions so differentiation example primary xylem primary phloem parenchyma colenchyma sclerenchyma these are differentiated cells produced from the apical meristems the next one de differentiation actually de differentiation means some cells lose their power of division rightly called permanent cells or permanent tissues these permanent tissues lose their power of division but uh, some cells regain their power of division and produces that a secondary meristems rightly called de differentiation best example medullary rays by de differentiation gives interfascicular cmbm in a dicot stem then conjunctive tissue and pericycle in dicot root gives both vascular cmbm and also that cork cmbm it is de differentiation re differentiation re differentiation means the secondary meristems gives a secondary tissues called a re differentiation vascular cmbm gives secondary xylem and also secondary phloem cork cmbm it gives cork and uh, secondary cortex by re differentiation 